to the chili. Oh, we're Wayne, and uh, we're gonna play for a little while. For a while. Ween Cast, a Ween podcast with Rory Gibbons and Shane Pretzel. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Shane. And this is Rory. And this is Weencast. And we welcome you to another episode. Um, we are Weencast, go... coming back at you. Yeah, man. Um, we are going to go back in time again tonight, and we are going to talk about a show that we've been talking about a lot, which is 420, April 20th, 2000. Uh, Rutgers University, the Earth Day festival um At this is skelly field one. skelly field this is a this is a big one this is a big one we've been uh sort of hyping it up and boasting it up for a long time now <laughs> and we're just gonna get into it we're gonna get into it um a couple of shout outs and a couple of uh of uh side stories we'd like to do before we start talking about this show um i want to give a shout out to uh a new friend that i've been talking to uh by the name of brian um, who was really cool enough to make us some new artwork, which is a cool little um, banner that he made that says Weencast that I uh, I uploaded for our uh, our Facebook page, and um, it was just so cool. He's like, yeah, he's like, I'd like to make you some artwork, and just sent me that. I'm like, dude, that's fucking awesome. Um, my yeah, thanks, Brian. Thank yeah, you. Thank you so much, man. My my digital artwork skills sort of ended around like uh microsoft paint like 1997 so you know any kind of um (laughs) any kind of artwork that anyone might want to make us would be greatly appreciated um and we'll certainly put to good use uh you know somewhere uh along the line um and rory you have a bit of a of a tale to tell about the last show that we saw which was the uh the philly met show am i right uh yes indeed so we went to the um the philly met show december 14th um as uh, was actually our last podcast was relaying the events of that show um so i uh actually the i alluded to it i mentioned to it briefly in the podcast but the uh the whole weekend kind of turned into this combined like birthday Christmas gifts for me and my wife because both of us have December birthdays and um, just with money being tight or whatever as it was this was like the one special treat that we were doing was like having this weekend in Philadelphia with this ween show being like the pinnacle of that weekend mm-hmm. and so at the ve- at the venue we had the op- you know they had those uh, the posters and uh, I think I mentioned in the last podcast that I got one of the ones that was signed by the whole band. Right. And for us, it was really special because I actually don't buy a lot of posters um, myself. And so it, it was kind of, it's a rare thing for me to be like, oh, okay, I want to spend that money. And so thinking about how special the weekend was for us, it was like, oh, this is cool. So so anyway, so we get, I get back to um, Charlottesville and um, want to get it framed right away, which is going to be a surprise for uh, my wife because... Normally we procrastinate and leave them in the uh, tubes for like ten years, and then we eventually get them framed. <laughs> I have some. Um, I have so, a bunch of uh, posters still in the tube. Yeah. So yes, I, yes. I totally hear that. But go go ahead. So so, so yes. Yeah, so um, I was like, oh, I'll actually go and get it framed. And I checked, and Michaels had one. You know, they're always running specials, so you find them when they have the good specials. And even though framing is still expensive, then it's at least like a lot cheaper. So I'm dropping off this awesome you know, poster and the guy's like, Oh, this is cool. And, and, uh, you know, prints out all my paperwork and he's like, yeah, this isn't going to be ready until, you know, January. So I was like, no worries. You know, I wasn't expecting it for actual Christmas, but, uh, well, January 5th rolls around, which was the day that it was supposed to be ready. So I'm uh, just calling in to just check in on it. And the, uh, the uh, framing manager is just like, uh, yeah, we can't find it. And, and he was even asking me, he was like, do you have it at your house? 
like I would have taken it home with me like the day that I dropped it off or something weird. What? And it's just like, no, dude, like <laughs> you have my poster. Where is it? And he, you know, was basically insisted that they tore the whole place apart and couldn't find it anywhere. And, you know, we're really sorry. So I was fl- obviously uh, rather upset, I'll, I'll say. And so, you know, made it very clear to them, you know, that they needed to uh, make it up to us. So they, um, long story short, um, they're, uh, you know, trying to track down the copy of the poster. They were like, you know, futilely attempt to get the band to sign it. And I'm like, that's not how this works. Like, good luck with that. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and, and then they actually, uh, the district manager called me today and uh, said that they actually found the poster. It was apparently misfiled somewhere in the back of Michael's and, uh, and that it's an awesome because the story ends well because I, they're going to pay for, they're going to reimburse me for the framing. So I get that for free and they, um, and I'm getting a second copy of the poster uh, for free as well. Uh, so. It's not, you, you were telling me earlier, it's not one that's signed by the band, but it's signed by the no. artist. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. So the, the, the new, the second poster is signed by the artist, not the band, uh, which is cool, t- cool too, because the artist is pretty darn cool. Yeah, um, I, for, I, I apologize for not remembering his name at the moment, but shout out to the artist because it's a cool poster, um, um, cool artwork. Well, but yeah, so so that was crazy because it was such a an up and down you know journey, and and I despaired that I was ever going to get that that poster back, and that you know I was going to have to settle for something else, and and just it was really just ripping me apart inside, and so to have a a good resolution is awesome. And so I can apparently can pick up the pick it up tomorrow. So I'm I'm working out uh, where exactly to hang that in my uh, my Ween gallery. As Dude, it were. It, it's it's so awesome that they found that. Uh, you know, Rory had been telling me for the last couple of weeks that uh, you know that this happened and that they you know they had told him that they had lost the poster. And I mean, a couple of things. Good on you for sticking it to them and being like, I don't care what you have to do. You're going to have to at least get me another poster and, you know, and frame it. Um, because if you would have just been like, Oh, well, I guess like, you know, accidents happen. They probably wouldn't have done anything, you know, like if they could have just like gotten rid of you, they probably would have. And yeah, I, o- I made it very clear to them that it was like, you know, not unique, but a fairly limited edition thing. Yeah. That had, intrinsic value to us right 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 and uh, i mean good on them for you know standing by you know taking care of you and you know putting you through that trouble of oh my god i might have just lost this poster which is i mean it's not necessarily one of a kind but i mean you know how many of those could they have made and then had the band sign like a hundred you know what i mean like that's yeah i don't know it can't be too many that's going to be a pretty rare thing you know in the future you know that's that's for sure it's probably something you couldn't even find now you know or uh you know maybe somebody that bought one might want to sell one but i mean you know that's gonna be well they they hadn't seen any of that actual uh signed poster online at least as of last week i hadn't seen any so yeah i know i think i did a quick ebay search the one day that we were talking about it too and i didn't even see one like a regular one you know like not not one that was even signed by the band or anything so so that's awesome that they found it and that they're gonna hook you up with a with a you know free framing so that's you know that's a good savings right there and you know good yeah ending to so a, that's to good a, um, they're making sort. they're making amends yeah um, totally which is good uh, I'm i'm really thankful that they found it because the alternative was basically that someone that worked there like stole it or something. And so that would just be a terrible thing to think like, how can you ever trust them to ever frame anything for you again? So I'm glad that it turned out that it was just misplaced and that they found it and all is well. Right, 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 right. Good end to the story. Good end to the story. Yes. Yes. Good end for the story. Happy new year, everybody. (laughs) Okay. So, like we said, we've been we've been kind of boasting up this show for for a long time, but um, the 420 show is just something that 
we've always just sort of gone back to in our discussions about Ween and about going to see Ween in our past and the sh- the great shows that we saw over the years. Rutgers 420 has just always been one that like we just kept coming back to, and we still do to this day. You know, like if we're talking about a show that just happened a couple of weeks ago or something like that. I mean, I still might even be like, but was it better than 420? You know. I still I still think about that in my mind, you know, the current Ween shows, you know, the ones that we just saw within the last, you know, year or two. Um, I had mentioned in the past when we had brought this up that I consider it to be like a real BCAD kind of show. So what what does that mean? You know, what what do I mean by that? So I was thinking about this and it may just be something that's in my mind and and when I think back on the shows that we had gone to um you know this is I, I didn't even count them but this is like our our seventh eighth show something like that and and all the shows that we had seen up until this point it's like everyone was a unique experience a fun time a great concert um you know, more more fun than the last one, basically. Um, and maybe it's just that we had seen them so many times at this point or whatever. This show happens. It's absolutely amazing. And we're going to get into, you know, everything that we can remember about it and then some on this podcast. And then the shows that we had gone to, you know, after that, you know, I'm not going to say they were bad or, or, you know, I don't think there's really such thing as like a bad ween show. You know what I mean? But this was sort of like a high watermark, you know, at the, at the, the band's time, you know, time in their career at this point, the, the late nineties, early two thousands, this show is yeah, sort this, of like a culmination. This show is, is, um, the quintessential, representation of the band as a live performance during that time period. Uh, yeah. The pre, the pre Quebec time period where you had the current formation of the band. Um, you know, like, you know, like, and not just pre- Quebec when it actually was released, but also when they started to play the Quebec songs, you know, like this is still like, um, you know, um, white pepper era. So, um, so yeah. that time period, like, truly a high water mark, but also as you said, I, you know, I, we haven't seen every show, and so there's plenty of shows that we haven't seen. But, but uh, time and again, when I think about all the shows that we've seen, it really keeps coming back to this one as just. It's really hard to find anything wrong with this show, honestly. Yeah, it, it, there's a perfect confluence. Of I don't you know I don't want to get into everything detail now because we're just getting started but like it's a perfect confluence of just the evening the atmosphere the company the the vibe the band was putting out the song the set lists the actual performances everything of the venue um, everything about it just came together and yeah. just produced like so every there's nothing bad no, there's not like a bad memory about it. There's not really a time where it's like, oh, what happened there? Everything worked perfectly, and there's so many perfectly brown moments, and then there's so many perfectly beautiful moments, um, and also just hard rock, you know, just everything. It's it's a really, it's it's really like if you're gonna give some anyone like a lot, a, a, a sh- like hey, here's live Ween, you might as well just give them this show. Yeah. Just give them a copy of this show. And, yeah. and say this is live ween and it's really going to basically be the best representation of that that you can have in my opinion in my humble opinion from what we've actually seen you know and i want to distinguish that maybe a little bit from like yes there's sort of produced live recordings and stuff and out what not out there i'm definitely really speaking you know one of the things that our podcast is all about is like the shows that we've been to and our experiences. Right. So speaking of the world of all the shows I've been to, man, you can't, you can't find a show that just hits it on all the levels like this one does. Yeah, absolutely. 
well well put. I mean, that's that's kind of what I mean when I say like you know a BC AD kind of thing. It's like before 420 and after 420. I mean, I remember you know talking to you, Rory, on the phone you know for years about you know, the different shows that we had been to and whatnot. And it's just like, okay, can we do like a top five? And it was always like, you know, okay, Rutgers, you know, Rutgers 420 was always in there. You know, I mean, that was just always part of the discussion, you know, no matter what. I I feel like, I feel like we would disagree between number five and through number two, but both of us would always just say what Rutgers is number one. Yeah. Right, right, right. You know, it's like you, you, you couldn't even really like argue it, you know. It's like Rutgers is like undisputably number one, <laughs> you know. Um, but anyway, we're gonna get we're gonna get into the whole thing. So why don't we start with uh, with some of our memories of getting to the show, and uh, and Rory, why don't you start because um, you guys actually came to pick me up. So how did you you were coming from State College? Yeah. Well, my first question was, do you remember how we heard about the show? Like, how that all went down? You know, I was I was just thinking about that the other day, too, and, and I don't. I mean, it must have been on, um, it must have been on their website or, you know, somewhere online that we had seen, you know. Uh, Undoubtedly, at this point, 2000, you've got to, there's, there's the websites out there. They, yeah. It must right. have been on Choco Dog or something. It right. might have it might have actually been the first one of the year because if you look at Brown Base, this might have been the first show of the year that they actually sort of like advertised because there's a couple of other ones that came before this like um, the Sterling Hotel in Allentown. You know that's such a small place. Um, you know, like that might have not have even been like announced like online. And if you just yeah. found out about it or whatever, then hey, great. You know those shows like that that are like those like warm up shows that have happened like before, you know, um, like a bigger show like this or something. I don't know. I don't remember, but you know, s- somehow we found out about it. It, it must've either been on their website or something that we saw, but I'm assuming that would have been it. Yeah. So, so at any rate, um, I was up in state college at the time and this would have been the spring semester at Penn state. Um, probably I admit to being an irresponsible college student that term. And, um, (laughs) and I'm pretty sure that it was just like, I was a Thursday, whatever I'm out. And I just like took the day off and, and, and did this. Um, I didn't have a car. I desperately wanted to go to the show because I'm at this point, I'm just a broke bum of a college student and, but the show is free, you know? And that's the first little kernel, the first little kernel of like, what do we have here at this evening of earth day? You know, and it's like, wow, this is a free show. And so I figured, you know what? I will be able to sell my friends on this show. You know, like I have friends who like listening to ween that. And if they hear that this is free, we will be able to put this together. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm putting it up to my friends and I got to give shout outs. Um, the, the, the crew from state college was, uh, Jesse, uh, John and Evan. And, um, I haven't been able to get a hold of Evan. Uh, Evan, if you're out there on Facebook, then I apologize. Um, last I heard, you're kind of off the grid and hard to get a hold of. But um, but I apologize if that's not the case. But um, but uh, Jesse and John actually got back to me. We kind of chatted a little bit back and forth about the show, and and that was kind of cool because I hadn't talked to either of those guys in a long time. And this is so 2000, so right, this is like 19 years ago. Holy cow! Yeah. Holy cow. yeah. And um, and so I had talked to those guys you know, more recently than that, but it's been a long time because I don't live in that area and I move around a lot and stuff like that. So it was cool and confirming some of the details. Um, but yeah, so I'm just trying to round up people in the morning. And, uh, so Jesse had his van, this, um, green Astro Ford Astro van. And, um, and then, you know, John came with us and then we grabbed Evan and, uh, and, you know, Evan is just kind of like, he's just a guy you always want to have along on a trip like this. And uh, and if it's free, Evan, the thing about Evan, especially back then, if it was free, it was all good. And so, <laughs> and so we had, we had the crew and, and we came down from state college and we had arranged, you know, this is still pre cell phones, at least cell phones for us. I didn't have a cell phone. Maybe, I didn't have maybe a cell you phone. did. Uh, no way. But, um, and so. 
So yeah, so we arranged to meet you at a certain time and uh, at a gas station outside of Hamburg. And uh, I'll let you get into more details on that in a minute. But um, but I do remember we got stuck in some kind of traffic jam on 78 east of Harrisburg. I don't know what it was. It's not like you have your Google map to look at and say, you know, was there an accident ahead? So I don't. I think it was an accident or something. It was just a lot of traffic and we didn't know what it was. It was just like unending. So I don't even remember... If we, were we, did we have to call you or something to to let you know we were running late? Because did I was wondering, did someone else have a phone or did we not have to call and we still – were we that early, like leaving State College, that that the delay didn't matter? Because we definitely got stuck in traffic for like, I want to say 45 minutes to an hour. Man, um, I don't – And it was by this like know. chicken farm. There was chickens everywhere. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I think, you know, you had probably just told me, um, you know, or like we figured out a good place that wasn't too far off the highway. Um, it was Route 61, which, uh, you know, from where it intersects with 78 uh, to where you guys picked me up is probably like 15 minutes, you know, like uh, something like that. And I don't. I don't know if you were probably, if you just said like, okay, we'll be there between like this time and this time. And I just went and just waited for you guys to show up. I I don't really remember, but I just remember like, okay, I'll be there. Like, as long as you guys can, can tell me that like, you're definitely coming and like, you can, you know, I can, I can hop in the van and, and come with you. Like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll wait for you. You know, I'll be there for whenever you can get there. I don't really remember. But yeah, it, <clears throat> it, it is possible that I waited there for like an hour for, you know, for you guys to like show up, but I was happy to do it. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's, you know, if I can, you know, hop in and, and, you know, get a ride with you guys, I'm down, you know, I'll wait. Um, but well, importantly, we weren't late for the show. So importantly, yeah, right. we definitely made the show on time. Right. Um, I mean, I don't really remember that, you guys being like late to, to like get me or anything like that, but it's possible. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, and it's a it's a fabulous little like anecdote about like the year 2000. And you're like, yeah. "All right, man. We're we're about 4 hours away if there's no traffic problems. We'll meet you at that gas station in four and a half hours." You know, and it's like and then you just go there and you're like waiting for the man, you know, like <laughs> you know, it's like the Velvet Underground. You're like we're just yeah. waiting for the man and you can't do anything about it. But um but no, that's great. Um but yeah, so um so anyway, so we swung by, we got off at Hamburg and uh, picked you up at Sheets, yeah, I believe. Yeah, Sheets on, on 61. One of the things I uh, remember very clearly is I was like, okay, so I'll take along, you know, at this point I've got a decent enough collection of CDs and cassettes, like Ween, like bootleg uh, shows on CD and cassette, you know what I mean? I didn't have it, as many on cassette, but I had you know, two or three or whatever. And, you you know, I've said this before on our podcast, but those back then were kind of hard to come by. You know what I mean? You had to like get someone to make you a copy of it, mail it to you in the mail and, you know, or whatever. So those were, you know, I'm thinking like, okay, I got the bootlegs, like, you know, I'll hook them up, you know, like I'm down, you know, like, you know, I'll blow these guys' minds when I get into the car and be like, yeah, you heard this fucking ween show? Like you're about to, you know? And, uh, and I was like, okay, well, I don't know what the van has in it. Like, does it have a CD player? Or does it have a tape deck? Either way, like, I can blow these guys' minds. You know what I mean? And, uh, like, you guys pulled in and were, like, you know, saying hello and, like, hey, what's up? You know, what's going on, guys? I'm like, what's in the van, CD or cassette? And it was like, neither, just radio. And I was like, <laughs> what the fuck, man? Like... <laughs> You gotta be kidding me! You, you know, didn't like, see that coming. I did not see that coming at all. <laughs> you know? So it's like, well, there goes that great idea. You know, the the, the Astro fan was good enough. Yeah, right. You know, so like it, it got us there and it got us home. And I remember um, your friend Evan and I had only met these guys maybe like once or twice before. You know, twice at the most. I think. Those those other guys I'm I you know probably only met like one time before this, um, but yeah. your your friend Evans like it's tall skinny um, dude who had made a t-shirt 
which was like the it went like top down. It was like the uh, Bugnish, and then a plus like underneath it, it was a plus sign, and then four twenty, and then equals you know this is all going up and down equals heart. Like Bugnish plus four twenty equals heart. <laughs> And I was like, oh, man. He, he may awesome. have made that in the car on the way down. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so. But I thought that was great. I was like, man, I should have made a shirt. Like, what the fuck? You know? <laughs> so. No, Evan, Evan is great. Um, old, a great old friend um, that uh, the first time I ever met him, when, I, when it was like, hey, hey, Evan, this is Rory, Rory Evan. He was like, the first thing out of his mouth was, what's your favorite Ween album? What? And so... Yeah, no, it was totally like right. To, he cut right to the chase. He had, he had been told he had been told that I'm a big ween head. He had okay, been told okay. that I'm a big ween head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, cool, cool. And so, so he that was the first thing he ever asked me. It was like, "What's your favorite album?" That's awesome. And uh, I think at the time I probably did like the cool thing and was like, "The Pod." Yeah. You know, and he was like, "Right on," you know. But um, that's cool. But yeah, no, you know, he had a homemade shirt, you know. Getting in the spirit of things. I'm pretty sure we were a ragtag crew. I don't think – we barely had money for gas, I think. Like, that's why it was so important that it was a free show. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, it's not like we had any money for for uh, concessions. We just, right. like, barely had enough to get us down there. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, so, I remember um, that uh, I had worn shorts, and it was kind of like one of those things I had to, like, debate because, you know, this is the end of April. Like, it's still cold. You know, I think it was sort of boasted as like a spring show or whatever, but it's like, you know, if you stop and think about it, it's like, it's not warm yet, like in the month of April, you know what I mean? Um, so I remember yeah, it's, being it like, it can be a I, cold month. It can be a cold month. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember like, sort of like debating like to myself, like, do I, you know, do I wear the shorts or not? And I was like, fuck it. I'm wearing the shorts. And I remember one of the, you or one of the other guys was like, oh, you wore shorts. Like I was going to. You know, like, and I'm like, yeah. And I, I specifically remembered my reasoning for wearing shorts was if I get cold, fuck it. That was it. <laughs> that was my, <laughs> that was my logic behind wearing the shorts that night. And, you know, just like going all in, like, you know, that's right. I got the shorts. Um, I love that. It was like a point of conversation. It was like, yeah, my crew loved you when they showed like you were. I think they may have met you briefly before or whatever, but not that they remembered you. So meeting meeting you was almost like mystical. It was like, oh, we're picking up Shane. Oh, we got to get off at the Hamburg exit and pick Shane up at a gas station. Like, what's that? You know, like it was like, oh, your bu- your other buddy who's really into ween, you know, they were like, oh, yeah, so it was awesome. kind of mystical picking you up. And then suddenly you're like, you know, bringing CDs and cassettes for radio and <laughs> and um, and don't wear <laughs> just wearing shorts. Oh, on like man. a chilly cold day. I think and it I was also, chilly and cold. Yeah, it was. And they mentioned that during and the breezy. show. And breezy, it can, was breezy. Yeah, they mentioned that during the show. You can hear them talking about that. I think also I had um one of the ween shirts that I had ordered like from the uh from the website which was I I loved that shirt. It was it was a green shirt. With just the bugnish in the middle, it had no writing on it. It didn't say. It didn't even say Ween. It was just like the symbol, in like a like a yellow, green, and red, um, like color. I think they called it like the superhero, and it was. Ju- they made it in green, and then I think later on in blue. But I had like the green, okay. like a like an army green. It had nothing on the back. I think I wore that too, and I think at the time it was it was pretty new. Like, I think it was the kind of thing that, you know, you hadn't really seen around a whole lot yet. Um, Because, like, as soon as I saw that, like, on the website, I was like, oh, I want one of those, and bought it, like, immediately. Um, So I think I might have worn that that night, too. I can't remember that specifically, but I I think I did. Um, But, yeah, so then we were on our way. um, And basically, to get to Rutgers from, like, you know, that area, basically you're going like past Allentown. Am I right? Like you're going East. I think you just keep following 78 East and eventually in New Jersey, you get on the turnpike or something. Right, 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 right. Um, so you got to go through like the Lehigh Valley or like past like the Lehigh Valley area. And then you're yeah, as I like, recall. getting into like New, New Jersey. 
Um, I don't really it's remember. Kind of in the any... smack in the middle of Jersey. Yeah, I don't really remember anything about like parking the car or anything like that. Do you? No, I mean it was a it was a university, but it was like the agricultural fields. So I'm pretty sure that wasn't like a big deal. It was just like you know, park. I don't even know if we even had to pay to park. Someone no, could confirm that out there, but I don't. I don't think that we did. I don't remember if you know, like they just had us park like in a field or like. You know, we just found like a space on like a street somewhere or something. I don't really, I don't really remember that part of it. But it, somehow, all, like I just remember finding it like no problem. Like next thing you know, we were there and it was like, okay, this is the crowd and you know we're here and it's about to start and it's like perfect. Yeah, it, you know, it was a free show on Earth Day, and all the ween heads were going to descend upon Skelly Field. Right. You know, like <laughs> Rutgers University, you are going to have ween guests. I don't even think that I knew that it was like a uh, that it was like a festival and that um, Juliana Hatfield was like the opening act for ween. And I guess some smaller acts. Um, yeah, we got her. there and and it was, I think, during her sh- performance. I, I don't remember any of the other bands and I. Don't know that much. Didn't know much about her at the time or anything. I don't even. So yeah, I, like, I was I basically remember, just going because it was Ween. I don't remember like anybody else even being on. Like I just remember like waiting for Ween to come on. I mean, maybe I remember. I remember there being someone up there playing as we were like sort of wandering about, and there wasn't a very big crowd yet. It was the crowd was kind of up by the stage, and so you could get away from it. And we were just maybe you were throwing frisbee or something. Oh man, that's a memory. I, I seem to remember us playing, uh, doing some you know hippie games, um, further out from the s- stage, waiting for the, uh, the the concert to get started. That's very possible. That kind of rings a bell. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't remember. Like I don't remember the opening act. I do remember, um, waiting for Ween to come on and kind of like you know crowding up. We had gotten a pretty decent spot in the field. Yeah, I was figuring we were like 10, 12, 15, something like I was, that. Like, yeah, I was just going to say maybe maybe like 10 people deep from like the from like the stage. Um, yeah, it was never like a mosh pit and never super crowded, which was one of the great things about the show that everyone had space. But but yeah, we were, you know, so we were close, but not too close. Right, to right, front. right. Um, and I remember, you know, they them like like Junior and Diener hadn't come out yet, but. Dave was on stage and this is before, you know, anything had happened and he was doing something with like the gear or, you know, like the amp or, or something and, uh, you know, like getting his shit like set up. And at this point, you know, like, you know, I know all their names and I know that his name is Dave and, uh, you know, so I'm just like, Dave, right? No, no reaction. So I just kept doing it. I was just like, Dave. Dave and maybe like the the third or fourth like yell he like looks up like is somebody yelling for me like are they is that is that meant for me and looks out sees that it's me you know I'm just a dude in the crowd and like he totally was just like what the fuck do you want (laughs) but he was really cool about it and he just kind of smiled and like nodded and I just kind of like waved and was just like yeah you know like Dave (laughs) yeah (laughs) <laughs> Dave really is the best. I love Dave. Yeah, he he does. I've met him a couple of times throughout the years, and like he was always nice to to me, and he seems like a really nice guy and everything. But it was just like one of those things I remember just being a fucking you know idiot, just being like Dave, like yeah, dude. <laughs> well, you got to give him a shout out. You know yeah, that's totally legit. You know, give Dave some fucking love. You know. But that, that's pretty much the only thing I remember, like, before them actually, like, coming out and, and starting. Was, yeah, no, I'm with you. Like, I, I, you know, we just got kind of into position and, um, you know, you could tell they were getting things warmed up. So you knew that Ween was coming on soon. The last, you know, opening act got out of there. And, um, yeah, I, you know, we were in the middle of the crowd, like... And it was interesting because early on, there weren't a lot of people by the stage. And I think people really started to show up when the show started. Um, and by the end of it, 
I, or in the middle of it or whatever. I think it was, you know, quite a bit of people, but there weren't too many at first. Um, but being in the middle, it was kind of nice because with the, I just remember like being somewhat insulated from the cold and it wasn't so bad because we were in the middle of everyone. So when the breezes came through, like it didn't really hit us as bad. Yeah. Because we were totally. in the middle of all the people. Yeah. And totally. so, and by the end of it, I swear there were like warm breezes or maybe that was just like euphoria, you know, like just enjoying a good show. But like, it was interesting, but like later on it felt like it was like warming up and maybe yeah. it was just being in the crowd. Yeah. You know? It was like, it was just... You know, being in the crowd just kind of kept you just warm enough that, like, you wouldn't get cold, basically. Yeah. You know, I remember that, too. Um, and also, we probably should have mentioned this earlier, I do remember that um, this is April 20th, like we had said, 420, and White Pepper would be released on May 2nd. And yes. at this point, like, we knew... Like, you know, White Pepper was, we knew the new Ween album was coming in. And we had heard many of the songs at previous shows as well. Right. We had heard a, a bunch of the, of the, of the shows, but a bunch of the songs at the other shows, but now it was finally like, yes, the new Ween album is coming and it, it it's coming soon. You know what I mean? Like we knew the date. Like I remember knowing like, oh, it wasn't like the following week, but it was the, the week after that. So, and I remember like talking to some people and, you know, oh yeah, the new album's coming out and blah, blah, blah. So this was sort of like a, probably like a, a show to, to start promoting the new album. Mm -hmm. But yeah, man, should we get into the set list or is there anything else that you can remember? No, I think so far that's a great um, summation of how we got there and, and how it all, all began. Um, so, so you want me to go ahead and read the uh, set list? Yeah, man, do it. Cool. So, um, hold on to your socks. <laughs> um, so they, uh, Freedom of 76, Nan, Take Me Away, The Grobe, uh, Spinal Meningitis, Roses Are Free, What Diener Was Talking About, Bananas and Blow, uh, Voodoo Lady, um, with, uh, Prince's Kiss, as an interlude, and then uh, The Mollusk, Back to the Basem, uh, Even If You Don't, Up on the Hill, Dr. Rock, Stroker Ace, Mr. Richard Smoker, um, Puerto Rican Power, Waving My Dick in the Wind, Fat Lenny, Panty Fackler, Spring Theme, Sorry Charlie, Oh My God, Laura, Ice Castles, The Golden Eel, The Set List Keeps Going, um, mono, uh, They Tease Mononucleosis, They Don't Actually Play It. Um, tender situation, reggae junkie Jew finishes up the main set, and then the encore is I can't put my finger on it. Buckingham Green, Birthday Boy, and uh, Poop Ship Destroyer. Hell yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Poop Ship Destroyer. <laughs> you know, one of the things that I remember thinking, like after this show happened and we were like on the way home and and whatnot and like i i still believe this like throughout the years when they play like a college they know it's okay to like get weird with it and like you can't tell me that they weren't like okay it's fucking Rutgers university it's cool it's all fucking college kids like, they're going to be cool with some fucking weird shit. You know what I mean? And they just lay it down, you know, not to skip right to, you know, some of the fucking really brown shit, but, like, spring theme. You know, Laura. Um, tender situation. You know, like, I still, to this day, believe, like, when you go back and you look at the shows where they play, like, a college you know, we've been to a few of them over the years, not just this one. It's like, this shit's going to get fucking brown. You know what I mean? Well, it's at a college. It's an outdoor venue. Like, an open outdoor venue. Like, really chill and open. It wasn't just an outdoor venue, but, like, in a big, like, you know, like, amphitheater. This is just, like, they put, like, a yeah. tractor-trailer bed on, like, a field or something, and there's, like, they had a little trailer was what they went into for, like, their breaks. Nibbling. 
So we're Wayne and uh, okay, in the middle of the field, in the middle of the agricultural field here. Yeah. Like, like a tractor trailer, like back, like yeah. not a regular trailer. Like, and that was just like right off the stage. It was like just plopped down there in the middle of the field, mm -hmm. an outdoor show. And on Earth Day, 420, I mean, the, all those things c combined together and it was just the perfect vibe and the perfect energy for everything to go just right. And it does. Um, they are having a great time. Uh, it's funny because Jeter's wearing these shades and uh, he uh, <laughs> he finds them on his amp, I guess. I found these shades on my amp. They're pretty cool. I do. I know, man. Especially with these shades on. Um, but, uh, but he kind of, you know, he's just up there ambling around all the time like Jeter does. And so <laughs> with his... <laughs> The uh, button-up shirt he's wearing and the sunglasses, he just sort of looks like a blind guy, like, <laughs> stumbling around, like, trying to find his way without his cane. Like, he's really <laughs> – like, it's funny. Like, you know, take a look at the video again. Um, and uh, <laughs> and it's funny. He just looks like a – like he's uh, blind. And that reminds <laughs> me, shout out to the Stallion Mang because um, – that was a good uh, YouTube video of the uh, of the concert, which we're yeah, I, referring to for our uh, for our content here. Yeah, I remember getting um, I remember getting this show on CD, um, you know, the audio of it, and then I think a little bit later, getting um, I don't think I had gotten a, a a DVD of it until like a few years later, but I think I had this on uh, like VHS tape, like a video of it. And there's a really cool YouTube video, which is actually, like, uh, someone had put, like, two bootleg videos together. And, uh, yeah, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure that's the one that, we would, that we've been going back and watching. It's just, the Stallion Mang um, is the YouTuber who, who uploaded it. And uh, that's really cool. You know, it, that's the other thing about this show is, like, it was recorded and, like, the recordings of it are really good, you know? Yeah, they're actually quite good quality, if I do say so, to everyone doing it. So shout out to everyone yeah. uh, involved. Um, but like, and, and you would think for, like, a show that's just in the middle of, like, the field like that, like, it might, you might not get, like, uh, like, a good recording of it, but that's not the case. This, was, this is a, a badass recording. Like, the bootleg audio from it is great, and the video, the videos that were made of it are also really cool yeah my so. original the one I, the copy i got was from you making me a bootleg of a bootleg um and the 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 cds we had it was that became like the ween bible like like i would make that and give it to pe my friends and be like this is what you should listen to you know right and and it became like an instant classic that you know i keep uploading on my computer I got the discs. It's like it became an instant classic. Like this would be the live show that it would be like play it while we're driving around. Like this is what I want to share if I'm going to share Ween with you. Yeah, um, totally. So, um, yeah, you know, just every – they laid it out on like every track. And um, it's loud and they're just rocking. Um that yeah, they, from front to back, they find a way to jam almost every song, and uh, and pretty furiously, and all the energy. I know sometimes we talk a little bit about recent shows, and I think you mentioned the last show. You sometimes can tell when they're like you know just on autopilot or something, and um, and in this show, there's no sense that there's nothing but like full energy engaged in like performing these at the highest level. And um, and so I think it shows, man. I think it shows. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that I think will come out in the some of the conversations we have about some of these uh, some of these songs. Um, so yeah. So one of the cool things um, there's all sorts of great banter in a show like this. Um, you know, Gene comes right out in like a typical Gene fashion. He's just you know, hi, we're Ween. We're gonna play for a little while. For a while, oh, you know, it's just like <laughs> a classic. Uh, Gene quote, 
Um, but uh, Freedom of 76 is an awesome way to start a show, um, especially in the Philly area. I know Rutgers is like, you know, kind of in between Philly and New York. I don't know exactly what allegiance they have. Um, so I don't mean any offense if they're all about New York and they hate Philadelphia. But it's not all that far from Philly. And so for me being a Philly guy, Philly area guy, I think it's – you start with Freedom of 76 on, a, on Earth Day in the uh, general Philadelphia region. I think um, you, you can't do any better than that to start a show. Right. Right. Um, yeah, they just, they ease into it and that's a great way to sort of like warm things up. Um, and then they bust out Nan, which is the shit. And one of the things I notice when I'm, when I go back and listen to this bootleg is there's a lot of great keyboard on this show. There's a lot of great keys as, as I say, if I'm being cool about it. And like, you know, Nan has a lot of great keyboard, you know, it's like something that, uh, just like jumps out actually. Um, yeah. So that's cool. And there's a, you know, there's a lot of, of little things that you could sort of pick up during this show that, you know, you might not be able to in other, other shows, like something like that, you know, like the keyboards on. Nah. Same thing with Take Me Away, you know? Yeah, dude. Well, so Take Me Away, I all of these songs, they're just like, the first off, these are some high-energy songs, right? And and you got Take Me Away, which I think is an overlooked song on Chocolate and Cheese, that um, they just totally jam it out at this show. Like, really uh, get into it. Um, there's a, uh, you know, I wanna, we're going to play a few clips this evening. Uh, to try to br- bring the uh, the show uh, alive to you, and uh, there's this moment where um, Gina's Dave's kind of like get, slapping the bass man, and uh, and Gina like gives him a bit of a shout out, and Dave's just kind of jamming, and then uh, Gina goes right into like this cool space, really spacey jam in the middle of "Take Me Away." Um, that's pretty cool. Yeah. David Jarrett's vision. Yeah, you got Dave there slapping the bass, you know, and uh, and then Dean are just jamming out um, on Take Me Away. Yeah, I mean, they're definitely getting into it, like, early, and it's like, you, you know from the start of the show that it's, you know, it's, it's no joke tonight, you know? It's no joke. This shit is going to be fucking real tonight. So, after... Uh, after Take Me Away, you got the Grove. Um, there's a cool little quote in there after uh, after the Grove. I think somebody must be yelling for something, and Gina is just like, we got it all tonight. <laughs> Which I like a lot. 
I, I, I love the... Which is I a love, true statement. Yeah, right. It's a very true statement, yeah. That was called The Grobe on Earth Day. Um, we got it all tonight. We got it all. We're here. And then... Um, that's, that's one of the things that impresses me about this show is is that almost literally, like, everything's on... Like, all, uh, the, everything's represented at, at this show, you know, like they got, they managed to get it all. Like we got it all tonight. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's very true. It's very true. And then, um, so spinal has got a, a sweet jam also. Yeah. Well, let's play a little bit of uh, spinal meningitis. Um, and, uh, here. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's fantastic, uh, Diener. Um, he's bending over really low. He's playing the <laughs> guitar is almost melting into the ground. Yeah, at his yeah, feet. yeah. If you're actually watching the video, you can see Diener is is going to work during that one. Um, you know, he's really uh, he's really bending it bending it over. Um, and then, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, but it speaks to the show. Um, like every every song. Um, that they play at this show, they just like amp up to the next level. Like everyone has, whether it's a short or a long jam, has some kind of like intense jam where you feel like they're putting all of their energy into it. Oh, absolutely. Um, and so that's just another great example. Um, okay, so after Spinal, you got Roses Are Free, which is always sweet. Um, what Diener was talking about kind of slows it uh slows it down a little bit and then we had mentioned that at this point we know that white pepper is coming out i think it's not actually the the week after this but the um the week after um so it's like uh it's like two weeks later but we but you know you know like i remember knowing like as a fan like oh the new record is coming out and diener actually does mention it um it's like this is from our new record that comes out next week so that's not exactly right. It's I'm pretty sure it's, it was the the week after that. Um, but he's talking about bananas and blood. We're gonna play some tropical shit here. This is a song off our record. It's coming out like this week, I think. It's uh, it's called bananas and blood. Which we had heard, I think maybe like once before this, maybe twice. It wasn't played, I don't think, as many times up until now as like the Grobe and Back to Basem. Um, I think we had heard it at least once before. I have to go back and and look at my set list, but um, we definitely heard it before. Yeah, we had heard it at least once before, but I don't think they had broken it out quite as many times as some of the other white pepper stuff before you know white pepper came out no and this is a, another great example so i know you know, when we talk about uh shows that are more recent uh you know one of the things that i think we mentioned before that the last show was how great the show was but how sometimes you could just f see that they were sort of just going through the numbers kind of um I don't mean I'm trying not to be disrespectful when I say that, but um, no, I know what you but mean. This back in back in 2000, you know, it's like playing Bananas and Blow uh, before the album actually comes out, um, and you know, it's just like feels like they're they're just putting everything into it, and um, and there's just like a lot of like energy, um, positive energy going into the music. 
a lot of care in every moment. Um, there's a great Diener solo in Bananas and Blow that, um, that we should feature. just like making that guitar moan um really a la San santana was uh really when re-listening to this album this uh show um you know it just strikes me as um a diener you know must owe a lot of influence to uh someone like santana yeah that's got some santana shit going on in it absolutely yeah man um so then after bananas and blow and you know okay so this is usually a, a pretty played out statement, but, you know, fucking voodoo lady, okay? But there's a twist with this show. <laughs> so, so obviously, you know, by this time it's like, okay, well, the voodoo lady is an amazing jam and everything. We say that on, on all of our episodes when we're talking about whatever show we're talking about. But for this show, this is one that, like, we will forever like sort of go back to when seeing Ween after this in the future. You agree with that, Rory? This is one of the, probably one of the great, you know, sort of moments of seeing Ween live, like that that I can think of. Yeah, yeah. Um, you yeah. know, it's like one of the quintessential moments of uh of what you can get when you uh, go to a, a live Ween show, right? And uh, right. So yeah, I, to me, uh, this the re, the um, the version of Voodoo Lady that they do at this show is like the ultimate version of right. Voodoo Lady. So like, if you know, if this is what I play, if someone says, "Oh, what what song is that, Voodoo Lady?" Yeah, yeah. I mean, first of all, you got the intro. So, um, Diener is on the talk box, which I always just refer to as the tube. I still don't understand how the tube works, but basically it's a thing that it's like, it has a, it's a separate microphone that has the tube on it. And while Diener is playing guitar, you either blow air into the tube or, or suck air out of the tube. I still, to this day, don't understand it. But it's bad. A la, a la Peter Frampton. Yeah, right. Peter Frampton shit. You know, we're talking about here. So You make the guitar talk, man. <laughs> his guitar's talking, man. So he just starts off do, with with the intro. I mean, immediately it's just like, wow, wow. And it's, you know, it's a tube. You know, it's like, oh shit, he's on the tube immediately. You know, just with doing the intro to fucking Voodoo Lady. So that's the first well, part. Again, Gene are saying we got it all tonight, you know? Yeah, this is... I mean... <laughs> they got it all. Um, yeah, we can play a little bit of that. Yeah, um, so play the fucking intro.
Yeah, you knew this stuff was getting brown. You knew it was getting brown. Right. So so now we're really starting to get into like a whole new sort of thing here, you know? So you got a sweet fucking jam, you know, as usual with Voodoo Lady. Um, some more Diener intensity, which we can play a little bit of, of that as we're talking about it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's just Diener getting really low to the ground on that one. Yeah. So needless once, to say. So once again, Diener is fucking rocking it out. But then, something we had not heard before. And you, you know, you, you, you may not hear them do this ever again. We don't know. I think I may have heard this happen one time after this in all the shows that I had been to. So... Jeter just fucking busts into fucking Prince. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. And Kiss. I I think they had done when looking at, at um Brown Base, I think they might have done this like once or twice before this this night. So it's not the very first time that it's ever happened, but it's certainly the first time that we ever saw it happen. And I mean it's just so fucking sick. I mean, you know, you don't have to be rich to be my voodoo lady. I mean, you know, what else can you say? Oh, it's so, great. It's great, and it's pretty seamless how yeah, it um, yeah, it's so smooth. goes in and out. So we uh, let's play a little bit of that for you. starts cheering as soon as he starts singing i love Um, how i love how it's like it's it's what you would typically you know if you're really like listening to um like the voodoo lady jam you know like the live version of voodoo lady and like you're really like getting it down and like how it goes and stuff it's they sneak in kiss like while they would be like wrapping it up you know, like it almost is like this is the part where they bring it back to, you know, but instead they just bust out fucking Prince. You know what I mean? So you just, you seriously just do not see it coming, you know, but it's just so, it's so smooth and it's just so beautiful. And every time I listen to that track from this show, I just love it. You know, puts a smile on my face every time and gets me fucking grooving every time, even, you know, all these years later. I love it. Amazing, yeah, no, it's great. And amazing live. An amazing nod to an amazing nod to Prince and um you know, the kind of music that, that uh influences the likes of uh Diener and uh and Ween 
So, um, Hell yeah. so it's awesome. And that's, and, and we've, you know, and they've done, uh, prints before at shows when we went to see them on, um, the, uh, New Year's Day show in Philly, right. you know, party like it's 1999. Right. Uh, you know, so, so that's, what's interesting is like, this is this like Prince undercurrent sometimes. Um, so, um, and so that was the case here, but really just an amazing, um, uh, we sort of wean moment. Yeah. So it's like, again, you know, we don't want to just keep saying, okay, voodoo lady is a standout, but for this show, it really was, it really was. Um, so yeah, just a great fucking jam voodoo lady. Then you got, um, you got the mollusk, you know, amazing song, but you know, kind of, kind of standard. Um, back to Basim, which again is still new, still considered a new song. And then even if you don't, so, same thing with Even If You Don't. I think we we might have heard that, you know, maybe like once before. That's another White Pepper track that was um, that was new. And um, I, I don't think they played that one quite as many times either. Um, again, I'm not looking at Brown Bass and I'm not looking at the numbers, you know, while we're doing this. But, but I think we might have heard that like once before. N- not as many times as The Grove or Back to Basem. So... You know, that's another fucking sick jam. You know, even if you don't. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No, and the, I think it was played about 15 times before that. Not nearly as many times as uh, Back to Basem um, and some of the other ones. Right. Right. Um, we might have actually seen that live, I think, maybe from, once. Um, from White Pepper, the upcoming right. album. Right. Um, so I think there's a sweet uh, guitar solo. Once again, um, you know, Diener gravitating, you know, toward the, the ground um, is the visual that's always like a corollary is as like some kind of sick jam. Um, and yeah. that's once again, dude, it's like every song on, at this show, they're just like laying every laying it on the line on every song. Yeah. And, you know, this being a new song, it's like it already has this kind of fucking sick shit in it. I mean, you know, (laughs) yeah, I I know that that's basically just like how this song goes, but it already has a fucking sick ass, uh, you know, guitar solo in it like that. Hell yeah. You know, (laughs) so we'll take it. We'll take it. Yeah, Um, dude. And that, and then follow that up with, um, up on the hill, which is one of the, uh, the really rare sort of, uh, songs at, that we saw at this show. Yeah. Uh, I think 34 times total. Um, so now including you're... after, you know, all, all, of all time, 34 times played. So really rare. Um, yeah. So now awesome. you're, now you're starting to get into like what else this night is going to unravel. And that is some really rare shit and some really fucking Brown shit. And that's, that's definitely one of them up on the hill. I mean, we definitely had never seen that before. And, no, and I don't think it's probably not since. Yeah, right, right. So that's a real quick little ditty, but uh, just a real rare, um, awesome tune that they throw in there. Yeah, so let's let's give you a little taste of that, um, since you don't hear that too often. Take you home. When I was young, 
my mama told me. She said, Gina, I want to smell it. And she smelled it, and it was smelling. She said, go, 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 go. So um, that's Godwin Satan, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, and so, you know, it's just going all the way back. We got it all tonight. We got it all tonight, you know? Yeah, man. I mean, that's definitely something we did not see coming, you know? And again, maybe heard one other time after that, that was it, if that. Um, so you got some other rockin' tunes after that, Dr. Rock, which I always love. And then another new song for the time, um... Stroker Ace, and this has got Jeter on the megaphone, which I don't think they really stuck with for all that long, um, you know, after that. But for this early rendition of Stroker Ace, it was Jeter on the megaphone, which sounds... Oh, yeah, awesome. this is, like, only, like, the eighth time it was ever played live, and it's been played over 200 times. So this is, like, an early early uh, stroke race yeah the, you know this one again um is you know an early rendition of what would become like a standard you know stroke race i mean that really got played a lot you know after yeah. these sort of like first few shows yeah absolutely do you want me to lay that one down yeah Hey everybody, this is Shane from Weencast. Hey, I'm sorry to cut the episode short, but Rory and I decided to make this a two-part episode, so you have to look forward to part two. We'll talk about the rest of the show, and we'll talk about our memories from after the show and looking back on the 420 show. We also have some really cool stories that we had gotten from listeners and other people who were at the 420 show that we were really happy and psyched about getting. Um, in the meantime, check us out on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher. Please drop a comment on iTunes, write a review, subscribe. It's fun, it's free. Uh, anybody that you know, that uses iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher, suggest the show to them. Um, hit us up on Twitter. It's at Weencast Podcast on Twitter. Um, hit us up on Facebook. There's a Facebook page and a Facebook group that's open to join. Uh, hit us up on YouTube. Um, drop a comment on YouTube or just email us. It's Weencast Podcast at gmail.com. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you so much to anybody who's listening to part one. And please stick around as part two is coming soon. Thank you so much. Peace out.